Today on DC News Now, less heat, but the humidity is sticking around, tracking the incoming widespread rain and storms. Virginia now under a state of emergency ahead of Tropical Storm Debbie. How to keep you and your family safe. A Virginia man is accused for making online threats against the vice president. Coming up, I'll have the details on the rising concerns of political violence. Also ahead, Walmart, Giant, and Safeway were putting their prices head to head to stretch your dollar, helping you decide where to get essentials. And get ready to race Formula One cars at the local arcade in today's Tech Talk. You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Well, good afternoon and thank you for joining us for the news at noon. I'm Mark Hall. Storms are expected to pass through the area today. Meteorologist Damon Matson is joining us with the latest check in the forecast. And Damon, the clouds, they just look like they're ready to open up. Right. We were talking about that off air just before yeah. we started here. And so far, though, those clouds, though they look like they are ready to drop a lot of rain, they have not just yet across most of the area. But as the day rolls on, that will change. Last night, we saw our first batch of rain rainfall move in from the north. Primarily, though, our northern counties were hit the hardest down toward D.C. into Virginia, southern Maryland. Nothing took shit not took place as we moved forward. But look at these rainfall totals up near the Martinsburg area. Over an inch came down and this little batch of yellow in Jefferson, northern Loudoun and southern Washington County. That was over two inches of rain that came down in some communities there from the storms that developed last night. And this is noteworthy because as we progress over the next few days and we get more and more rainfall, it's going to add on top of each other. And that's where we have to watch out for the threat of some possible flooding. Now here today, well, we have more rain coming down across western Maryland, primarily moving out of Allegheny County into western Washington County. At this point, this storm has some heavy rainfall associated with it between Cumberland and Hagerstown. We do have some showers bubbling up to the south as well over southern Maryland. And as the day progresses, we're going to see more scattered showers and storms. Now, folks, this is the excessive rainfall outlook for Friday when the bulk of Debbie's rainfall is set to move in. We have a level three, even level two risk for that flooding rainfall. We'll talk more about the details on what is to come from Debbie coming up in your full forecast here in just a bit. All right, Damon, thank you all across the DMV. People are preparing for remnants of the incoming tropical storm. Debbie to hit this weekend. St. Mary's County on Mar in the Maryland side, handing out sandbags today and tomorrow to help you get ready. You can grab them at the St. Andrews landfill anytime from 8 a.m. until 4.30 p.m. And in Virginia, Governor Glenn Youngkin declaring a state of emergency ahead of the tropical storm. Uh, the de declaration allows Virginia to mobilize resources and equipment in response. DC News Now's Liberty Simmons is in Alexandria with the, the latest. Well, we are in Old Town Alexandria, which usually sees a lot of flooding during storms, and we're already seeing a very large puddle here from the last time it rained. Tropical Storm Debbie is expected to cause significant damage as it moves through our area. The city of Alexandria passing out these free sandbags for residents at three locations across the city ahead of the storm. The sandbags are available on a first come first serve basis. Governor Yunkin issuing a warning for Virginians and visitors ahead of the storm. He is urging you to follow local emergency guidelines and take necessary precautions to keep you and your family safe. Debbie is expected to bring strong winds, heavy rains and possible flooding across the Commonwealth. He declared a state of emergency to deploy resources and equipment needed for response and recovery. The storm could impact transportation and even lead to power outages. Dominion Energy is urging residents to be prepared with backup power supplies. They say if you see down lines or their crews at work, stay a safe distance away. Fairfax County emergency crews urge residents to create an emergency plan and put together an emergency supply kit. But it does affect getting out and around here, especially the, the retail stores here. You know, they, they lose business during that time. Now to learn more about what items you should include in your emergency supply kit, just head to our website at dcnewsnow.com. That's where you'll also be able to stay informed about Tropical Storm Debbie safety alerts. For now, in Alexandria, Liberty Simmons, DC News Now. 
Liberty, thank you. And new this afternoon, a woman and her dog are safe after escaping from her car that plunged into a pond. It happened in Bowie this morning. The accident remains under investigation. DC News Now is your local election headquarters. Breaking earlier today, we now know the unofficial results of the special primary election in Prince George's County. Now, in the crowd of Democratic field, Council Chair Jolene Ivey leads the Democrats with 49% of the vote. And in the Republican primary, Michael Reichert leads with 47%. And the winners will move on to the general election competing to fill an at-large seat on the county's council. The election is to replace former council member Mel Franklin. He resigned in June after accusations of misusing campaign funds. On the national stage, Vice President Kamala Harris officially selected Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz as her running mate, both of them appearing on the stage for the first time last night in Philadelphia. It's the first stop in a week-long tour of battleground states that will be crucial for winning the presidency. A source familiar with Harris's decision says Walls appealed to her as an effective messenger who can help win mid Midwestern states. Meantime, Republican Vice Presidential nominee J.D. Vance already criticizing Walsh's policies. The kind of person who makes people feel like they belong and then inspires them to dream big. And that's the kind of vice president he will be. Tim Walsh's record is a joke. He's been one of the most far left radicals in the entire United States government. No word on when a debate between Vance and Walls will take place. Meantime, local lawmakers are weighing in on Harris's VP pick. In Virginia, some Democrats say that Tim Walz's Midwestern upbringing and experience in the Army, along with being a congressman, makes him the perfect choice. However, some Republicans believe that Walz is too liberal for the country. Down to a basic gut instinct personal level, he's the kind of guy you want to invite into your living room and have come for dinner. He buys into and possesses full responsibility for the dysfunctions that we have seen over the last four years. Many Republicans also say that they're concerned about Walsh's history as the governor of Minnesota, and they bring up weeks of civil unrest after the murder of George Floyd in 2020. A Virginia man is in custody and facing several charges for allegedly making threats online against Vice President Kamala Harris and other public officials. DC News Now's Jean Marie Sassay has more and what the Secret Service is doing to try and make sure that these individuals are protected. 66-year-old Frank Lucio Carrillo of Winchester, Virginia, is only facing one count for making threats against the vice president. Now, according to court documents, amongst thousands of online threats, one of them included a post towards Harris, where Carrillo says he has his AR-15 locked and loaded. And Harris wasn't the only person. She was only mentioned a little over a dozen times. Now, the FBI found nearly 4,000 posts and replies targeting other public officials and the Department of Justice. Now, Carrillo was using an online platform called Get under an alias name and the authorities learned about the threats at the end of July and after tracking him down two guns were found in his home last week including an AR-15 and thousands of rounds of ammunition he was arrested and on Monday he appeared in front of a judge for the first time Carrillo was charged with one count of making threats against the vice president a former Secret Service agent Matt Chevro tells us online threats are something they see more and more the internet has also certainly made it easier for individuals to, to voice threats um, and, and in an anonymized way. Um, however, these threats still get reported. They're still taken very seriously by the Secret Service. So it's, it's something where I can't say that they've necessarily increased because I don't have numbers, but it is certainly uh, something that we're seeing more and more of because of, of how information flows today. Now, the incident is still being investigated by the U.S. Secret Service. Reporting in the studio, I'm Yamar Sassay, DC News Now. All right, thanks to Yamar. Now, if you live in Virginia, reading your electric bill could get easier to understand. Virginia State Corporation Commission ordering Dominion Energy to make bills less confusing. It comes after a customer complained that he was being overcharged bringing the issues to regulators. Now, after an investigation for several months, the agency found the customer was not overcharged. However, they say Dominion's bills are too confusing and are ordering them to simplify their billing process. A spokesperson for the company says they will make the changes. This is going to be a noticeable 
simpler, cleaner bill. And uh, we're excited to roll that out in uh, September, October time frame. Uh, I think it's going to be uh, October before customers will actually be seeing this. Uh, Dominion Energy says customers can expect to see simpler bills starting in October. All right, we're stretching your dollar with another chance to save at the grocery store. DC News Now's weekend anchor Ben Dennis is comparing prices at three popular supermarkets to help you find the best price. Walmart, Giant, and Safeway have a wide presence here at home and offer competitive discounts to real folks inside. But before heading out the door and grabbing a card, we're back with the latest prices on 10 grocery essentials. Reviewing prices up and down the aisle. We found that a little time to price check can go a long way for your wallet. High prices for essentials remain. The USDA says grocery prices are expected to rise 1% for the rest of the year. But thankfully, at a slower pace than recent years, dining out, prices to increase a little more than 4%. So, what to know before you go to Walmart, Giant, and Safeway? The price for 10 pantry essentials we've identified. According to the lowest prices published online to start the week, compared to just two weeks ago, no price changes at Walmart. Giants saw a value pack of chicken breasts drop $1.70, and one pound tray of ground beef is down 50 cents. A 12 ounce bag of broccoli, that's down 45 cents there. Over at Safeway, 12 brown eggs are a buck cheaper, but that 12 ounce bag of broccoli is $1.49 more. Value pack of boneless pork chops dropped $2, as did the price of one pound tray of ground beef, down $1.50. Here's what essentials are cheapest. At Walmart, seven of our essentials. Giant wins for a value pack of chicken breast and a one pound tray of ground beef. Safeway on top in one category, boneless pork chops. And go a step further, consider tech to help you browse prices too. Certain apps will grant you cash back for groceries like Ibotta and Fetch and bulk buys always go a long way. Ben Dennis, back to you.